got up here, and uh, so the pastor went and took us a little lapel mic, and I leaned over and I said, uh, how about leaving me more than 12 minutes to preach tonight? <laughs> so I feel bad that he preached short tonight. But uh, what's really going to make me feel bad is I, if I only preach 12 minutes. <laughs> Thank you, ladies, for your kindness, for the food. And I appreciate that good fellowship this week. Amen. You know, I want to say it's just good to be back in a meeting, you know, with all that's happened in the last year. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, been so much cancellation, and I talked to other pastors, and I said, you know, what's killing me is uh, the separation from the brethren. And yes, not, sir. Not being able to go to uh, meetings and fellowship and get to hear preaching and I love preaching don't you? Yeah, man. Amen. Amen. It has changed my life. Yes. Amen. 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 So we're in the book of 1 Corinthians tonight. The book of 1 Corinthians and I'll start our reading in verse number 9. 1 Corinthians in verse number 9. The Bible says, for a great door, verse Corinthians, what did I say? Verse 9. I'm sorry. There's more than one verse 9 in here. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse number 9. I apologize. Chapter 16, verse number 9. For a great door and effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. Now if Timotheus come, see that he may be with you without fear. For he worketh the work of the Lord, as I also do. Let no man therefore despise him, but conduct him forth in peace, that he may come unto me, for I look for him with the brethren. So I'm going to leave off my reading there, and you can be seated, and I'm going to pray, and I want you to pray for me. Father, I thank you for the preaching that we've already heard tonight. Thank you for Brother Morris, his yes. testimony and his ministry. I pray that you would uh, raise up uh, Sister Stacy and yes. touch her and help her. And uh, I pray that you'd help me in this time now as I preach the Word of God. And Lord, uh, once again, I ask you to help me uh, to be a blessing tonight. And Lord, I pray that you'd give us focus Give me focus, yes. and I pray that you cause the Word of God uh, to work with great effectual power yes. in our hearts and lives and change us for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. So my text verse is verse number 9. For a great door and effectual is open unto me. So here's my thought tonight. He says, and there are many adversaries. Yes. So I want to preach to you tonight on the evil against the ministry. Mm. The evil against the ministry. So we've been trying uh, to hang with that subject, that thought about the man of God, the ministry, and to understand uh, God's purpose for having a man. Yes, sir. And then I, I, I want to uh, I, I, I've been trying to bring it home personally tonight that that means something to me personally. Right. And so, and so he says here, if Timotheus come, uh, 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 see that he may be with you without fear. So he's saying something there that correlates with this verse, and you don't need to turn there. But it's in Hebrews 13, 17. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. So what he's saying to the believer is 
you take no nobody else can force you into submission right. uh, that's something that you have to do uh, in your own heart right. in your own spirit you put yourselves under the authority of the man of God Amen. you have a reason for doing that because you love the Lord Amen. and because this is God's um, this is God's will if you please right. this Amen. is God's way that we have a man of God to rule over us and to Amen. preach to us and lead us along the way. Amen. Amen. And so, as Paul is writing here, he brings up this matter of adversaries. And so, we go all the way back to Genesis in chapter number 3. We see, uh, we see the fall of Lucifer. We see Satan. We see Satan confronting Eve. And that's a whole other message there in itself. But he is tempting and speaking to the weaker vessel. Right. And, and so uh, he affects Eve. And uh, 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 in, in course of that, <coughs> Adam falls into sin. Right. And God has a plan of redemption. Amen. And I thank God for that. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. So uh, God's plan is to use a man. Uh, a prophet, a man of God, a right. pastor, a preacher, and this this man of God is is preaching. He's heralding right. a message, yes, and it's a good message. Amen. Yes, it is the gospel. It is good news. Brother Billy Mitchell makes this statement. It's not good news to everybody, right? Because you could go out in the middle of Walmart. And preach the gospel, and most people will get away from you right, right. instead of being drawn toward you. Right. But when the Spirit of God gets you hung out over hell, yes, sir. And, and you get under conviction, Amen. then the gospel becomes good news yes, to you. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. And and you love the gospel. Right. Well, there the gospel message is a powerful message. Yes, it is a message. That has the power to convert the sinner to a child of God. Amen. 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 We all believe in conversion, don't yes, we? Amen. This is just not religion. Right. This is reality. Amen. You can be saved and God will change your life. Amen. And that power lies in the preaching of the gospel. Amen. So what do you think? That the devil thinks about the man of God. Mm. He doesn't like the man of God. Amen. He wants to take the man of God down. Amen. Amen. You see, you and I uh, are linked with the ministry. All of us are linked with the ministry. Sure. Yes. If you've been saved and you're a member of this church or whatever church you're a member of, you are linked with the ministry. Right. I, I, I took a lightning a few years back about just reading uh, some on the Civil War. I'm not deep into that. But I really like that Stonewall Jackson. Amen. I really like his character. Yes, sir. And, um, and so I found this out that in the, in the Civil War, one of their main targets was, was to take down a commander. A general. And that's what they pursued. Was to take down. A general. In an army. Or in the opposing side. Right. Take down an officer. Take down one of those men. That are leading. And giving orders. To the other men. And that way it will cause. A tremendous hindrance. To the opposing army. Right. And then I, I read about. Stonewall Jackson and a lot of his character was when there was a conflict taking place that instead of instead of backing away from the front lines and going up into a farmhouse somewhere and setting up a headquarters he would get on his horse and he would ride in the midst 
of the front line yes, conflict. And, and the reason he was doing that, he had firsthand insight on what was taking place. Right. Right. He also, they said, would ride in amidst his men and he would yell out encouragement and strength to those men. Amen. Amen. And they would hear the word of their commanding general that he was in their midst Amen. and he was barking encouragement Amen. and strength to them. Amen. And, and because of his loyalty, oh, they would say, they would say, General Jackson, you don't need to be out here. They're, they're, they got their crosshairs on you. They got their sights on you. But we don't need to lose you. But he felt it a great asset to his men to be there with him. Amen. 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 So that's what a man of God is. That's right. Amen. And so Satan and his evil is targeting, is targeting the man of God. That's right. Amen. Now, real men of God are rare in this day. Sure. That's real right. men of God. That's I'm right. glad. We have many good men of God. Sure. Amen. But in comparison to the population of right. just of America, yeah. uh, we're, we're, we're very few and far between right. of what is needed. Amen? Right. And, 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 so, and so the sights are upon the men of God. You can imagine here. And I, I'm, not, I'm not saying there are not men that could fill the pastor's place. Right. But if your pastor fell, if I'm, I'm not fall morally, but if he was taken down with sickness, or maybe even the Lord took him home, or the Lord moved him somewhere, and, and then you started, you started praying and seeking and trying to find a man of God to fill his shoes. Why you call uh, some men and and you can tell they're getting up and and, uh, and maybe of course you would want to question them and and uh, you would ask them about what kind of a book that they read out of right. what kind of a Bible do they preach out right. of and then after a period of time you would become very knowledgeable to the fact that it's going to be hard to find a good man of God that right. believes. Uh, and preaching in the power of God right. and preaching truth and living holy yes. and leading the flock of God along yes. not the broad way but the narrow way. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. So, if we're not careful, we misunderstand what takes place in the ministry. A lot of people, um, and I'll, I'll just bring out the Baptist church, but a lot of people have joined up with a good Baptist church. Mm -hmm. they, they've joined up with a good local church, a good man of God. And it seems like over a period of time, seems like there's always some kind of rustling taking place. <laughs> Somebody is miffed about something. You keep seeing these sites where some man wants to get the pastor over in a hallway somewhere. And, and, and you pick up that something's not going well. The pastor's countenance is falling. And this man is, is just giving words. Maybe not so the whole church can hear. But he's upset. And, and it goes on. And... And the pastor's preaching certain things. And it, it doesn't take a theologian to put one and one together and it comes up with two that there's some kind of conflict or stress. And, and, and then maybe that gets resolved and something else comes up. And then a whole family leaves. And, and, and then another family leaves. And finally, you have a mom and dad saying, you know what, it just seems like there's always tension. Yeah. There's always there's always conflict going on. There's, there's always, seems like uh, instead of going to a 
very pleasant church where everybody loves everybody. And, and uh, I'm not mocking that. I'm just simply saying you have to uh, go to um, uh, worship every day church or whatever. <laughs> you know, or some kind of off brand where I anything goes right. and, 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 right. and nothing is preached and yeah. it's not of God. Right. But as long as you're involved in the will of God, as long as you're involved in the will of God and you've got a man of God, the devil has got his crosshairs yes, on sir. that and Amen. he's attacking that. And if yeah. you're not careful, you're going to end up making a wrong turn in yes, your life. Sir. You're going to make a decision and you're going to end up leaving the house of God where God wants you to be. Amen. And so all of us are involved in the ministry. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so, and so, I, my message tonight, and uh, I, I, I kind of this was this was a message I preached of, b before, but when I looked at it, it just doesn't fit. And so I restudied it today. So if I'm stuttering around, I, I'm trying to get on the right track. Yeah. I, I was I went out in the country just driving some today, and I got lost, and I depended upon my phone. But my phone couldn't even help me. Yeah. The, the phone had the picture of the car going out in a cornfield somewhere. <laughs> and I could see the road over here somewhere. And I kept trying to turn my phone to get, get it, the car back over on the, on the road. I, I don't know how to operate all that stuff. But, but anyway, I kept driving around until finally I came to a road that actually had a yellow line in the middle of it. And I felt better then. I thought I was going to have to call a pastor and, and get him to come find me. But, but but a lot of people get off course like that. Right, sir. They get off track. Right. And, and if you're not careful, you have to you have to be serious. Every one of you laymen, and I say that respect, respectfully, right. you have to get on track about what uh, uh, about what Brother Moyes is preaching. Amen. The will of God for your life. Amen. And so if this church is the will of God for you. Wherever that may be, right. if that is the will of God for you, then plant your feet right there. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Clean your gun out Amen. and load it and put your helmet on. Amen. And yeah. sit down and start worshiping God. Amen. And go to the general and say, what do you need me to do? Amen. 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 Get on your knees. Amen. Amen. You men keep your eye cocked. Amen. And, and, and watch for any other man that's come in and sitting in your midst and getting red faced with the pastor back in a Sunday school. Right. Amen. You might want to invite him to go on a long ride with you <laughs> and fix that problem Amen. for your pastor. Amen. Now listen, now listen, I, this is not a message to get you to uh, act belligerent or away from Christian character. Right. But what I'm trying to preach to you tonight is the very fact that we're in a warfare. Yes, sir. And it involves the ministry, it involves the man of God, Amen. and it involves God's people. Yes, Amen. Amen. So I want to read some scripture. Go with me to Matthew chapter number 10 and uh, try to stay awake. Follow with me a little bit. I want to read some scripture. Um, and you follow along. Matthew chapter number 10. I'll try to give you the, the whole reference this time instead of just a verse. All right. Matthew chapter number uh, 10. And let's look at verse number 34. Matthew 10 verse number 34. And uh, let me read it to you. The Bible says, Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace but a sword. Mm. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Yes. So what's he talking about? 
Well, when the gospel came and men started getting saved, the whole family wasn't getting saved at one time. Right. The husband would get saved and come home and his wife wasn't saved. Right. Or the parents were getting saved and the children weren't saved. Or an elder son was getting saved and the parents weren't saved. Right. And so what happened was, and what, what still happens today, is people link up with too much priority over the will of God in their relationship with Christ. They link up with their sister yep. or their mother or their parents. Right. Right. And they get together at Christmas or they get together at Granny's house for Sunday afternoon dinner. And, and the rest of the family does not agree with the change that's taken place right. in your life. All of a sudden, you and your sister are divided. Yep. You and your brother are divided. Right. Uh, uh, some of the rest of the family, the uncles, the aunts, and your family's not divided. Uh, now you've got a brother and he's got an older daughter that's turned into a lesbian. Yep. And he wants to bring right. her to all the family get-togethers. Right. But you've been saved and you're trying to guard your children. Yeah, and all of a sudden, everything seems like it's coming apart Welcome to the ministry. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It's not a pleasant thing. Right. I'm not being I'm not being cocky about it. No. I'm not being light about it. It's something that grieves all of us. Yes, sir. Amen. It's something that's difficult to deal with. Yes. Sir. It's hard to talk to a son on the phone that's an adult and got his own family. And you keep asking him about his attendance to worship. And, and it was two weeks ago he dropped in on a Sunday morning. Yeah. But he hadn't been since. Or you're talking to a daughter and she's gone off and married now. And, and they're going off to a church that grieves your spirit to hear about where they're going. And, and so uh, this thing is constantly, whether you want to get involved, whether you want to get uh, revived and being brain dead about it or not, I'm here to tell you the devil is always working and churning and fighting against the work of God. So I want to find out about it. I want to be interested about it. I want to, I want to learn about it. Amen? I want to learn about it and understand what God wants me to do. Uh, Philippians. Go with me to the book of Philippians. And let's look at Philippians and uh, chapter number 3, Philippians in chapter number 3. And the Bible says in, in, in chapter number 3, in verse number 1, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord, um, rejoice in the Lord, to write the same things to you, to me indeed is not grievous, but for you it is safe. He says, beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Verse 17. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Yeah, Amen. Yes. People tell you and try to influence you that you can have some sort of salvation that will get, get you to heaven. But living righteously and living holy and living out the doctrine of separation does not matter anymore. Amen. Then they are enemies of the cross. Exactly right. Amen. Listen, Amen. this is not the Catholic Church. Mm. You don't come down an aisle and, and, and just uh, go through some religious format with a Amen. priest right. and they put your name on, on, a, on, a, on a book somewhere 
and then you go to heaven that way. No. That's a false message. Right. Yeah. This thing is a real experience. Yes, sir. Yeah. And it's not between you and the preacher. Nope. It's between you and God. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He literally converts you. He saves you. Right. Can you imagine? I'd like to been uh, I'd like to been a possum out in the field watching that maniac of the Godara. <laughs> I'd just like to, if I could put my person in a possum and be out there and point my nose in that direction when Jesus Christ pulled up on shore Amen. and watched all this take place and that roaring of those demons coming out of that man. But yet embedded down in all of that darkness was a man of desperation yes, sir. that when he saw, yeah. when he saw the Savior pull up on shore, he said, this is me. This is for my, my salvation. And he went to him. And Jesus Christ cast that darkness of those demons out of that man. Saved them. Gave them peace of heart. And put them in his right mind. And clothed them. And sent them back to the house. Amen. I'd like to bend the beagle dog out in the front yard. When that old boy came back home. Amen. And watch that whole thing. I mean some scream from a little girl. Go running in the house and, and call out her daddy. Daddy's coming down that road, but he's not staggering. And he's not screaming. Uh, he's got clothes on him. I, and, and I don't know what's the matter with him. And mama parts the curtains and looks outside. Uh, it, this, this is deep in the Greek. You won't find it. In the, uh, listen. And mama parts the curtains. And she said it looks like him. And he comes in and he stops at the gate out by the dirt road and says, Honey, I want to tell you something before I come in because you ain't going to believe it. I met Jesus out yonder in the bone yard and he's changed my life. And you got a brand new husband. Amen. And that's what the ministry is all about. And the devil hates it. Yes, sir. I probably shouldn't have redone all this. But I'm going to tell you. On and on we go. The Bible tells us Paul wrote in, in, uh, in, in, in 2 Timothy. Paul wrote charging Timothy, instructing Timothy. And he says these words in, in chapter number 2. And he says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. I want to pause right there just a minute. I got too much flood in my mind. But I want to tell you something. You know what's what the problem? When you read this about the lay of the sea in church over here, and, and and you 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 people that have studied your Bible, and I know you've run across this before, but he dresses this church a little differently than he has the other church. Yes, sir. Yeah. And the other churches, he says, unto the angel of, like the church of Sardis, to the angel, which is, means messenger, right. which is in reference to the pastor, right. uh, of the church in Sardis. Mm -hmm. But when he writes to the lay of the scene church, he says, unto the angel of the church of the lay of the scene. Yes. So the pastor and the, the church itself has changed their whole format. They've become lax about the ministry. They quit on God. They have taken their faith and they put it in a lazy boy recliner. And they're laid back. And, and he says the reason is because the church has replied, Thou sayest, I am rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing. Right. When people get to the place. And here's where we are in our churches. Yes. Where we don't need anything. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Everything yeah. we do. Is yeah. kind of like a, a tip to God. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I'm doing you a, a favor preacher. Yeah. Right. I'm doing God a favor. I've showed up tonight. Yeah. I'm on. putting some money in the plate. Yeah. I'm here. 
And that's why we come in and we sit in these cushioned seats and thank God for them. Sure. And we sit there, we sit there, and we yawn and we, we pretend like we're scratching our leg and we look at the watch and and uh, you know, some people go as far as texting in church. Yeah. Or looking at their phone yeah. and trying to send a message back. None of that should be going on. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. None of that should be going on. Right. And so what's happened now. The church has gotten exactly where the devil wants it to be. With no power, no interest. Uh, the husbands are not being the preachers in their home. They're not being spiritual. They're not backing the man of God. They're not interested. They're not praying. They're not praying over the missionaries. You know, down through these years, there have been, and, and, and a lot of us can say this, there's been a lot of good families and a lot of good men of God that have fallen. Yes, sir. Yeah. They've ruined their lives. And I don't know whether you ever think about this or not. Yeah, he tells the truth. Yeah. Yes, sir. But if I had been in focus, if I had been in focus, if I had been zeroed in on this brother, this missionary, this evangelist, if I had been focused, if I had been praying, if I had been sensitive, I remember, I remember hearing Percy Ray preach one time. And he said, uh, he said he left the meeting, he was headed back to his home, his church, and said he was driving through the night. He never did give any details, but he said out on a country road, he came to a crossroads. And he said, I was faced with one of the worst temptations. He said that temptation that I faced that night was overwhelming to me. He said, I thought I was going to break and yield to that temptation. He said, all of a sudden, it was like God came and lifted me and supported me and gave me the grace to just push the gas pedal and, and go on. Mm. And he said that, 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 that vile pressure and that temptation just lifted. Amen. When he got home and got, I, I think I'm telling this right. I do remember there was an older lady in his church. And when he came into the service, this older lady came to him. Said, Preacher Ray. And she mentioned that night. And she said, what was going on with you that night? And he said, Sister, what are you talking about? Which he knew full well what was going on. Mm -hmm. he, she said, God woke me up. And she he said to me, get on your knees out of that bed right now and pray for preacher. Amen. 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 She said, preacher, I don't know what was wrong, but she said, I prayed until the burden lifted. Amen. Got back in the bed and went to sleep. Amen. Can you, can I say something to you? What's happened to that in our church? Yes. Amen. Yeah. Right. We're not in tune with God anymore. Right. Right. Yeah. We just kind of think, well, you know, I'm a member of this church, and I come in here, and I just kind of sit with my teeth in my mouth until the preacher says we can go home, and then I come back and, and go through the same thing, and we go home, and, and, and mom and dad are not focused at home. They're not cleaning nothing up. Uh, they're letting the kids go wild. They're plugging in movies and turning on the TV and, and just letting the kids raise themselves. And uh, somewhere over on a table somewhere, you might find a Bible somewhere. And, and then it's time to come to church. And we're just kind of, we're kind of like a sled headed down an icy hill out of control. And we're not focused in on anything. Right. Am I making any sense tonight? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was reading something. I can't, oh, I was over here. In, in, in 2 Timothy. So here's what he says. He's telling Timothy in chapter number 2, verse number 1, to be strong. He says, and the things that thou hast heard of me 
among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So this is like running a relay race. Right. We're carrying a baton. We run that. We run our part. But we pass that baton on to the next one. Right. Yes, we sir. pass that doctrine on to the next Amen. one. We pass the old time ways on to the next one. Right. And on to the next one. Amen. Then he says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I asked some of these brethren that are older than me about being in Vietnam. I think there's three or four. I can't remember. My brother is eight years older than me. He was in Vietnam in 1968. So you men could tell that story over there. But I was home with mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And even though there were front lines in warfare over there, I witnessed a warfare at home. <laughs> Amen. Back in those days, some of you might remember uh, a couple of names on news reporters like Walter Conkright. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, there's another one just named just passed. Anyway, my brother, I remember he got drafted. He was leaving. I remember this probably the Sunday before it's time for him to leave. I remember him coming forward in church. I'd never seen that much activity, you know, about moving toward God out of my brother. Mm -hmm. He'd been saved, but he got right with God. Mm -hmm. I guess being drafted and knowing what you're going into will make a man think about getting right with God. Amen. And so we said goodbye. He left. And then when he went over there and got in the front line activity, you know, the the commuting of letters, there was a seemed like there was a, a long span in between getting a letter from over there and getting a letter back over there. Mm -hmm. But Mama, every time we'd get a letter, we were all so excited. And Mama would read it out loud in the little, little living room. And the course of time that he was gone. You know, we heard about his malaria. We heard all the different things that had happened. His buddy blew up and his legs were gone. And he held his stump in his lap and tried to witness to him. And, 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 and uh, just all the different stories. And, and, and I remember Mama, uh, we, she would cook up supper and... And we'd all want to get in the living room for the six o'clock news. Mm -hmm. And they'd turn it on and they'd come on there and, and, and they'd give a report about the, the hot spots and the activity in the war. And Mama would get so sober and she'd pull a letter out and she said, uh, uh, Gary was supposed to go there. And uh, I'd watch my mom and dad's countenance and and, and after the news went off, Daddy did this. He said, all right. He'd say, Ronnie, you start. I wouldn't even say anything. He said, Ronnie, you start praying. Eileen, which was my mama's name, you pray. And he said, I'll close. Next night, it was the same thing. The news... Daddy would say, Ronnie, you'd start. I will you pray. And then I'll close. And then I remember one night sitting at the supper table, there was a, a knock at the door. And I, I, don't, I don't know the names of all this, so y'all have to forgive me, but there was some kind of official on the front porch. And I went to the door. I was always, you know, the kid of the house. And I, I'd run to the door, and, and he'd ask for he said, is Mr. Jake Jones here? I'd say, Daddy, I'd go to the supper table and say, Daddy, it's a man. Who is he? I said, I don't know. It looks important to me. He went there and I stood kind of behind the door. There was something about my brother and shrapnel and wounded. 
I hear my daddy said, is he still alive? He said, as far as we know now. I remember the happiness. In the happiness. But you know what I remember? I remember when he got over there. And I remember when we got away that he's coming to the house. Amen. We never were an emotional, huggy duggy kind of family. We just didn't, and, and, and I don't know why, but um, it would tear my mom and dad up to get that way. And, and I remember going to the airport and they'd say, now Ronnie, just try to contain yourself and all that. And I, I thought, well, I don't know what you're talking about. We've always contained ourselves around that. <laughs> but I remember them unlocked down that gate and I kept watching. I see all them soldiers coming out and I was, I was looking, I was looking, I was looking. There he was. He wasn't that brat, big brother anymore. He was a soldier. Amen. I didn't hardly recognize him. And I lost. I lost him. I mean, all that crowd there at that gate. I went, hey, Gary! <laughs> and I went running, dodging. And I leaped and grabbed him. And, and man, he just took one arm and just went. <laughs> 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 I felt ribs popping. <laughs> And I couldn't help it, but my heart just broke. A soldier that fought hell on earth had been faithful for my family and our country had come home. Amen. And you know what Paul was saying to us? He's saying to us what God is trying to say to us. Yes, sir. Be a good soldier. Amen. You're not supposed to sit in a Baptist church sucking your thumb all the time. You get focused. Man, they souls down to go to hell. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How many of you love that flag right there? Amen. You know what this means? This means God-given liberty. Amen. Amen. To, to be able to do what we're doing tonight. Right. That's right. There's men here and, and thousands upon thousands that have lost their lives. Yes, sir. For us to have that flag. Yes, sir. Amen. That's right. You know where we're losing this? We're losing it in the ministry. Yep. What you're seeing in America is a result of our failure. In the ministry. Yes, sir. Right. Amen. You're right. If I was the devil, if I was the devil. I do, I do what the devil did do in Exodus 17. Mm. And I would get God's people to chide against the man of God. Yes, sir. Yeah. You ever read that? Yes, yes sir. <clears throat> they get they got in a spirit. They got in a spirit where they grumbled. Yes, sir. And complained. Yeah. They're thirsty. You brought us out here and we're going to die of thirst. Yep. Always murmuring. Yep. If I was the devil, I would just get in the middle of the church and get God's people to always complain. Mm. It don't have to be about the pastor. Just complain about your money. Yeah. Complain about your clothes. Yep. Complain about the oil dripping from your car. Yeah. Complain yeah. about everything. Yeah. Gripe about everything. Yeah. Yeah. You 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 got a two hundred dollar watch, but you got a friend that's got one of those watches that's got a, a thirty six inch screen on it, and, and she can do everything. And now you want that, and you don't make enough money. And I need to go to work, and you're strained, and the lady's going that way, and the man's going that way, 
And the kids can't find God. Right. And when you do come to church, everybody's so wore out, yep. so upset, so mad, been complaining all week, and you can't feel the presence of God in the church. Mm. If I was the devil, I'd get everybody to gripe. Yes, sir. That's what I'd do. Yes, sir. If I was the devil, after a great victory, I'd get Amalek to show up. Mm -hmm. I'd get the flesh just to rise yes. his head up. Yes, sir. And the only way that they could gain any victory with Joshua down there fighting the Amalekites is with the man of God up on the hill. That's right. Amen. Yeah. And if I was a devil and I could see that the man of God was, was on the hill and he got weary holding his hands up and he put him down. And every time he put him down, Amalek was discomforting Israel. Right. Yeah. Then I would want to make the man of God just weary with his hands. Mm -hmm. I'd want to pressure him and push his hands down and try to get him not to pray. Mm -hmm. But thank God for two good men. Amen. Amen. You know, a lot of times it just takes some basic common sense. Yes. Just watch what's going on. Yep. You know, I, I don't mean to embarrass the pastor. I, I don't mean this. But if I could use this for an illustration. I showed up today. First time was at lunchtime. As soon as the pastor come in, you know what I picked up right away? He's frazzled. Were you frazzled? Yes, sir. I picked that up right away. I don't know. That's his, his business. He just said a lot of times on Wednesdays, just seems like Wednesday, everything happens. You know what you need to pick up on that? Open your eyes. Amen. Pick up on things like that. He needs a little extra prayer. Amen. His Amen. wife needs some prayer. Amen. 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 It seems like every night I'm, I'm not doing very good at what a Bible study. But, you know, can I just do my heart, preach yeah, my heart? Yeah. Can you ladies open your eyes and watch your pastor's wife? Can you do that? Okay. Can you maybe come, come to some thought that maybe a card, a card, a, a little gift card, are there any Dunkin's Donuts around here? <laughs> I, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm, I'm just saying, are there any of those? Could, could you buy, could you afford $10 for a gift card and a little, a little, um, a little thinking of you card and just write a note? What a blessing. What a virtuous woman. Thank you for being there for our pastor. You're appreciated. Yeah. We watch your mannerisms. You're a blessing to me. And just put that little donut card in there and seal it up and, and just drop it in her Bible. Mail it to her. Yeah. Just a little common sense. Yeah. Yeah. A little extra prayer. Yeah. Amen. You don't have to sleep 10 hours. Get tuned into the Holy Ghost a little bit. Amen. Let them wake you up at 1.30. Amen. Let them wake you up at 3 o'clock. Yeah. First thing you ask yourself is, why am I awake? I found out when I asked that question, the Holy Ghost would say, you need to pray about this. The other night, yes, the night before last, I think it was. I just woke up. I said, why am I awake? He said, you announced you were going to preach the false, uh, false, false prophets. But he said, you didn't ask me about that. You're trying to figure it out yourself. <laughs> He said, I want you to preach this. Amen. Now, I'm not bragging on me. I'm just saying, Brother Jimmy, am I making any sense? We yes. need to turn in a little bit. Right. We need to wake up. Right. We're not in Disney World. Right. You need to get your mind off of Dollywood and the Smoky Mountains and think about what's going on. Uh, none of these places like this church are going to be in existence two and three years from now if we don't get involved in the fact yeah, about the ministry yes, and sir. the man of God yeah. and sinners need to be saved. Yes, sir. Amen. If I was a man, if I was a devil, if I was a devil, I'd get in a woman like Jezebel. Make her run her mouth. 
at a weak time yeah. in a man of God's life. Elijah, Elisha, John the Baptist, mm -hmm. those men are some of my favorites. Amen. I love to read after them. I get overwhelmed every time I come to 1 Kings chapter 19. Yes, sir. What a soldier. Up under a juniper tree. Yep. Yes, sir. Begging God to take his life. Would you believe that a man of God would ever think thoughts like that? Yes, sir. So discouraged. So discouraged. Brother Jimmy's been preaching about the will of God. There's one thing I found out about the will of God. This is personal. This is personal. Because I've, I've missed the will of God several times. I've pastored two churches. And I messed up on both of them. Here's, here's where I messed up. I resigned both of them when God did, didn't tell me to resign. Mm -hmm. So I resigned my first church after I've been there four years. After I resigned, God revealed to me that I was out of God's will. And I backed up, apologized to the church, asked them to stay. You know how hard that is to do in a mountain Baptist church? So I took my church that I'm at now. I got up and resigned in. And after I'd been through what I went through the first time, so humiliated, embarrassed, this time I, I spent time in prayer. I sought the scriptures. I thought I was right. I resigned. Same thing again. Here's what I've learned about me. If you mess up in the will of God, if you're able to eat crow while it's hot, Eat it while it's hot. Yeah. 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 Amen. Back up if you can. Yep. And get it right with God and get back on the right road. Right. Amen. 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 I've got to quit, but I won't. I got so discouraged. I've had people that left me my first years at Mineral Park. By the way, I did back up. And I did stay at Mineral Park. And I've been there now for 33 years. Amen. Amen. And I'm not boastful. That's to the glory of God. Right. And by his grace. Amen. I got so discouraged. I was so low. I was working. I was working up in, up in the mountain. Lookout mountain. And I was having to pick up some side work to make an income. And I was doing some carpentry work. And I took a little job by myself. I took a little job up there doing some repair work on an old cottage that a fellow would rent out that was built back in the 1920s. And, and, it, and, it, and a lot of it had rotted and I was working on it. and I just went through a difficult time. People had left. I was up there one time working and a, and a man that was like a right-hand man in my church didn't even know where I was at but spent all morning driving around that mountain until he could find my pickup truck and came in that cottage to bless me out mm. for the way I was pastoring, the way I was preaching. I went back up to that cottage. It was cold. And I was so depressed, preacher. I'm ashamed. I was so discouraged. I was saying to my heart, I am done. I'm not trying to make you laugh, but I'm being honest. I got in that cottage, and it was like it took me an hour just to get the tools out of my truck. I was just so consumed. And I got in that cottage, and, and the only heat was a little fireplace, and I, I got a little fire built, and, and I had a little radio up there that we would listen. I would listen to a local radio station, and I, I'd turn it on, and I was having a hard time getting going. I thought, you know, I'm, I'm doing this by the hour. God helped me get my mind clear and get working here. And I, I got started working, and some different singing, different preachers were coming on, and, 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 and I was just so just. There was this one charismatic guy. 
he had a pre-recorded musical singing thing that came on every time it was like a, a dance to you. They all, all you, you could just imagine hands up in there and all uh, swaying and, and jabbering and shouting and, and he would come on that way and and uh, I was in there working and I was so discouraged preacher that program came on and I said to myself I said oh boy this is one day I do not want to hear your garbage <laughs> and I laid my tools down and I walked toward that fireplace where that radio was and you're going to laugh at this, but this happened, preacher. I walked toward that radio, and I was going to take the plug and pop it out of the wall. He interrupted his pre-reported program. Charismatic preacher. He said, radio friend, this is brother so-and-so. He said, I am telling you today, do not touch that radio dial. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> So I stopped and I looked around to see if I could see God anywhere. <laughs> he came on there and he took a text about the feeding of the 5,000. The five loaves and the two fishes. And he said, before he started in his message, he said somewhere out there in radio land, honest preacher, he said, he said, there's a preacher that's fixing to take the white towel and throw it in. And he said, I've got a God-anointed message. Amen. And I sat down, I took a five-gallon bucket, turned it over, and I sat down. And I said, oh boy, I'm going down for the third time, and I'm, I'm fixing to give you an opportunity to help me, even though you're a tongue flapper. I'm, I'm going I'm to give you an opportunity. And he got to preaching one of the best messages. And he was, he was talking about those disciples, how that he would break that meat and break that bread and give it to them. Now see the picture here. Right. He gave it to them to give to the people. Right. Yeah. And they kept doing that and kept doing that until all the people got so full they couldn't eat anymore. Right. So the natural frame of mind would be, okay, this part's all done. Yeah. But he brought up the part about the fragments. Yeah. He said, now, go gather the fragments. And here's what he said. That nothing be lost. Amen. Amen. Nothing be lost. Yes, sir. And he concluded his message. He said, I'm preaching to a preacher. And all you've got is leftovers. I didn't raise my hand, but yeah. that was me. Amen. Yeah. He said, all you've got is left for us. And he said, I've got good news for you. <laughs> he said, God, look what you throw them left those away. Amen. And when he said that, I grabbed an old broom handle right there. And I held it up like a sword. And I said, praise God, I'm going back to church and preach. <laughs> I ain't going to throw my leftovers away. Man, I got to say praise God for a tongue flapping charismatic that can help this poor Baptist preacher. Amen. It's going down the radio. Yes. <laughs> but I believe God sent me some help. Amen. You've got a part. In this ministry. Amen. You got a part. Amen. Where's my house builder at? Amen. You're an asset to the ministry. Amen. What a man of God. Yes. Look what God's given you. Amen. Look at this radio station. Amen. Amen. Look at all these sinners yes, around here. Man, we don't want to curl up in a in a room in a hole somewhere and, and 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 please understand what I'm saying. I am not making fun, but the world. Listen now, listen to me. I'm not being ugly, but the world and the government's trying its best 
to muzzle us. Yep. Yeah. And I'm not making fun. I'm just simply saying they're wanting, they're wanting to do more than muzzle just our mouth. They're trying to muzzle the ministry. Yes, sir. They're trying to muzzle the man of God. Yes, sir. Right. They're trying to. It's the devil. And the devil hates this work of God. Right. Because it is the power of God unto salvation. Amen. 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 To the Jew first and also to the Greek. Amen. 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 Man, I didn't understand any of this. 19 years old, I was about as wide as a broom straw, but I was lost and on my way to hell. Yes, and I had no idea. But an old man of God, and he wasn't that old. Ralph Green. You don't know Ralph Green. But he was an old man that my daddy bought a little piece of land on when we moved from Maryland back to the mountains. We were out one day and daddy said, let's go in the hilltop. It was a little diner. He said, let's get us a hamburger. So you walk in that little diner and you go up to a window and tell them what you want. When we walked in, Ralph Green was sitting back in the little diner eating a hamburger. And he said, hey, Jake. He said, y'all order and come sit with me. We made our order and went back there. He said, Jake, where y'all going to church? We hadn't been moved back to Boone very long. Daddy said, we're visiting around, but we, we haven't settled in anymore. He said, there's an old Tennessee boy preaching down here at the Boone Tabernacle starting a church called Bible Way Baptist Church. Amen. Yeah. You know what? He didn't talk about the building. He didn't talk about the special singing. All he talked about was the man of God. Amen. It was like he was describing a, a pit bull that foams at his mouth. <laughs> said he's got power. Amen. said, man, their soul is getting saved. Amen. I've never been around anything like that. Well, I remember we went in that old tabernacle, and everybody in there was happy. Yeah. I know I wasn't used to that in Baptist churches. <laughs> everybody was happy. Everybody was fellowship. Yeah, Them old mountain people in there, and 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 they call, he called for the choir. And when he spoke, it would rattle the walls. Yeah. And he just seemed to be so full of joy. And and, and they got up there in that choir, and and I thought, wow, this is different than the first Baptist church. Yeah. And they would sing. And, 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 you know, I was lost. I'd sit back there in the back with my dad and my mom. And, and, and I couldn't tell a lot of spiritual things. But, Brother Jimmy, I could feel something. It's, it's like something was getting deeper in there. And all of a sudden, that choir exploded. And, 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 them, and them ladies were screaming and holding their hands up and praising God. Amen. And then that man of God would get up and preach and folks would come to the altar. And we left that place. My dad got in the car and he was weeping. He said, Ronnie, what did you think about that? I said to him, I said, Dad, we need to visit around. I've never been around anything like that. I, I thought that was one of those snake handling places. <laughs> He said, well, I liked it. I felt something there. I'm not a feeling anywhere else. And we went back and went back and went back and joined the church. And I stood up there and gave him my little uh, dried up profession of faith. But I didn't know God. Right. But I kept sitting under that man of God. And there was something about that preaching that kept hammering and hammering. And it got down inside and turned me inside out. And I said, I'm lost and going to hell. Yes, sir. Amen. That's a wonderful thing. We're a part of this. Right. That's right. But hell is against us. Yes, sir. Amen. And you need to be aware of that. Amen. Right. Amen. Yes, Preacher, I'm not, I'm not embarrassing you. Oh, well, but men, look at here. He's tired. He gets tired. He gets discouraged. I know how a pastor does. You're ready to kick the bucket, but now you pulled on the church parking lot. So put your cheesy grin on. Oh, praise God, brother. It's so good to see you. Yeah. But you know what he needs? I don't want to drop the bucket. He needs some men. Amen. Let me have your other hand, Richard. Yes. 
So he needs an Aaron. He needs a herd. Amen. Amen. He said, preacher, you rest. You spend time with your wife. Amen. If there's anything I can do. Yes. Preacher, is there anybody that needs their jaws boxed? <laughs> Amen. Help him. Amen. Amen. Watch him. Let him pray. You know what? Listen, I know he studies, but you know what? He just needs some time. I, 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 I know he, he said something about he lives in a housing development, but you know, a lot of my, um, a lot of my, my, my studying sometimes, honestly, is not libraries and books. Yep. I just need a big rock and a pine thicket sometimes. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense? Yes, yes sir. sir. He needs it. Yeah. But what about the evangelists? What about the missionaries? Yeah. Who cares about them? Amen. Who cares about them? I've called some missionaries sometimes and asked about their wives. You know what they say sometimes? Preacher, could you have your wife call my wife? Yeah. She would just love to hear a female voice that she could talk to for a little while. Amen. There are evils against the ministry. Honey, could you come here a minute? Could you come here? This is a sweet, I'm not going to you. I just, how old are you? Five years old. Isn't she sweet? Amen. Yes, sir. There's a lot of little children there. If we don't understand the warfare, if we don't get, if we don't get in where we're supposed to be and get to do it, what's she going to have? Right. Mm -hmm. What's she going to have? Yes, sir. I think she should deserve to have a nation like the Amen. Amen. She should have a, a, a nation like I was raised in. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. But unless a divine miracle takes place, these kids will never Amen. see America Amen. that you and I have seen. Right. Amen. Never Amen. know. So true. <laughs> Well, I'm done preaching. I think I've preached long in the end, but I've tried to follow the Lord. Good. The evils against the ministry. We need some soldiers that will be tough. Be strong. Stop being offended about everything. Stop looking at yourself all the time. Stop complaining all the time. There's a hard work to be done. We need some men and women that will get on the battle line. Let's all stand together. The pastor's coming. Thank you, preacher. I appreciate you. Amen. As they come with the song.